How y'all doing out there? Um, there's a Senegalese proverb that says there can be no peace without understanding. So I took a move out of one of my heroes book, um, Dr. Martin Luther King, the founder of Kingy and Nonviolence, and I sat with people who um, I might not always agree with. I sat with a group called the National Rifle Association. I did an interview about black gun ownership um, in this era. That interview was used a week later by NRA TV to disparage a very noble campaign that I actually support. March for Our Lives is a youth-ran campaign um, organized in part by kids out of Parkland, by kids out of Douglas High School um, down in Florida, and by kids all around the nation. I, being a former youth organizer, currently an activist and organizer, respect their leadership. So I want to say first, I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry that an interview I did about um, a minority, black people in this country, and gun rights, you was used as a weapon against you guys. That was unfair to you and it was wrong, and it disparaged some very noble work you're doing. The work you're doing is self-motivated, self-initiated, and it's noble. I think you should be doing this. As your ally, and I am your ally, young people, I want to say that many of the people I organized with were at that march, whether it was ending racism or ending classism or many of the people that agree with some of the social ideas like free health care, um, fair wages, fair earning for women, um, gay and lesbian rights, black rights in particular, um, around community policing and black men, all those things, all those people made up that march. I'm a friend and advocate to you all. The young people especially who are self-motivated, self-organized, I'm an ally and an advocate for you always. I'm simply stating this to say that my interview with said organization who we all don't agree with was supposed to be something that continued a conversation or that helped the conversation happen that I felt needed to happen. And that conversation is about African-American gun ownership. Why is that even important in these times? Well, African-Americans have only been free for 54 years. Up until 54 years ago, we were in virtual apartheid, and some would argue that we still are today. Because of that, some of our nuances are subtly, di subtly different than our than allies we have, and we have to always remember that in our allyship, we still have to make sure that there are certain rights and demands that we make for us in our community. That's all my interview was about. It was not in contrast to your march. It was done well a week before your march. It should never have been used in contrast to your march, and I think it's wrong. To the young people that worked tirelessly to organize, I'm sorry adults chose to do this. I'm sorry NRATV did that. I'm sorry that adults on the left and the right are choosing to use me as a lightning rod. What I want to encourage you guys to do is keep organizing. Keep organizing. Keep organizing. Plot, plan, strategize, organize, and mobilize. This world was far different 30 years ago when you could buy a machine gun. And it's far different now, and it'll be different 30 years from now. We're willing to follow your lead lead the way. So I do support the march and I support black people owning guns. It's possible to do both. I wanted to make sure that my words were heard. I wanted to make sure I was clear in what I was saying. And I wanted to make sure that you knew that what I did had nothing to do with disparaging you. I love and respect you all. Love and respect you and commend you for your work. Keep marching for our lives. Keep pushing on. Peace.